my name is Leo, and welcome to another reading of the Elder Scrolls. Today we're going to be reading The Last Seed, Book 8 of 2920, The Last Year, The First Era, by Cadillac Downway. First of Last Seed, 2920, Mournhold, Morrowind. They were gathered in the Duke's courtyard at twilight, enjoying the smell and warmth of a fire of dry branches and bitter green leaves. Tiny embers flew into the sky, hanging for a few moments before vanishing. I was rash, agreed the duke soberly, but Logan had his laugh and all is well. The Moring Tong will not assassinate the emperor now, and my payment to them is at the bottom of the inner sea. I thought you had made some sort of a truce with the danger princess. Uh, what your... S what your sailors call the Daedra may not have been one, said Sothersea. Perhaps it was a rogue battle mage or even a lightning bolt that destroyed your ship. The Prince of the Emperor are en route to take possession of Ald Lambrassi, as our truce agreed. It is certainly typical of the Cyrodiil to assume that their concessions are negotiable, while ours are not. Oh, that was Vivek. Ah, oh, whatever. Vivek pulled out a map. We can meet them here, in this village in the northwest of Aldabasi, Ferenskill. But will we make them talk? Will we meet? Well, will we meet them to talk? Asked Amalexia. Or will we make war? No one had an answer for that. Wow! Fifteen days later, fifteenth of last seed, twenty nine twenty. Favinthil, Morwen. A late summer squall blew through the small village, darkening the sky except for flashing of lightning which leapt from cloud to cloud like acrobats. Water rushed down the narrow streets ankle deep. The prince had to shout to be heard by his captains, but only a few feet away from him. There's an inn up ahead! We'll wait there for the storm to pass before pressing on to Owl Lambassi. The inn was warm and dry and bustling with, with business. Barmaids were washing back and forth, bringing grief and wine to a back room, evidently excited about a famous visitor. Someone who was attracting more attention than the mere heir to the Empire of Tamriel. Amused, Julek watched them run until he overheard the name of Vivek. My lord Vivek, he said, bursting into the back room. You must believe me, I knew nothing about the attack on Blackgate until after it happened. We will, of course, be returning it to you, your care forthwith. I wrote you a letter that, to that effect at your palace in Balmall. But obviously, you're not there. He paused, taking in the many new faces in the room. I'm sorry, let me introduce myself. I'm Jurek Cyrodiil. My name is Avalaxia, said the most beautiful woman the prince had ever seen. Won't you join us? Sounds the same, uh, said a serious-looking Dunmer in a white cloak, shaking the prince's hand and showing him a seat. Oh, God. Iliol Berinzi Dolom, Duke Prince of Mournhold, said the massive, massively built man next to him as he sat down. That's the name of the uh, the quarter in Mournhold. Yes, it is. Named after him, I suppose. Uh, who's talking now? I recognize that the events of the last month suggest at best that the Imperial Army is not under my control, said the prince after ordering some wine. This is true. The army is my father's. Who's talking now? I understand that the Emperor was going to be coming to Old Lamassa as well, said Amalexia. Officially he is, said the prince cautiously. Unofficially he's still back in the Imperial City. He met with an unfortunate accident. The vet glanced at the Duke quickly before looking at the prince. An accident? He's fine, said the prince quickly. He'll live, but it looks like you'll lose an eye. It was an altercation that has nothing to do with the war. The only good news is that while he recovers, I have the use of his seal. Any agreement we make here and now will be binding to the Empire. 
both in my father's reign and in mine. Then let's start agreeing, smiled Amalexia. <laughs> Sixteenth of last seed, twenty-nine twenty, Rothnaga, Cyrodiil. The tiny hamlet of Rothnaga greeted Kassar, I remember that guy, with its colourful... Who was he again? Ah, he was the, the captain slash scout guy uh, for the uh, Morrowind army that misinterpreted what was going on and Vivek was quite upset. Anyway, uh, greeted Casano with its colourful houses perched on a prom... prom, prom you can do it! Promontory, that's terrible, but good enough, overlooking the stretch of the Rothgarthen, Roth, Rothgarian, mountain plain, and high rock beyond. Wait, is that supposed to be like Hrothgar? Like high Hrothgar? As in the greybeards of Skyrim? Oh, maybe. Sure. He had been in a better mood. The sight would have been breathtaking. If sorry, it, had he been in a better mood, the sight would have been breathtaking. As it was, he could only think that, in practical terms, a small village like this would have a, would have meagre provisions for himself and his horse. In a side note, I just like to make a stupid joke. Uh, I was talking with some people. I'm living in Japan. And, uh, I was trying to explain the expression... What was I explaining? I think, I think it was breathtaking. And I was like, well, breathtaking's like, really awesome, like, amazing view. And I showed, like, a picture of, like, an amazing fjord in, like, Norway or something. And then I, I said, oh, okay, here's a good example. Um, uh, if I were to... I can't, I can't remember what the sentence I said. Uh, standing on the moon would be breathtaking. <laughs> uh, nobody got my joke. Like, you, you get it? Because it's it's breathtaking. Because it's like an amazing view, right? Because you're seeing Earth and the moon and stuff. But it's also breathtaking because if you don't have a helmet, <laughs> you can't breathe. <sighs> it's funny for me, anyway. Don't care if anyone, nobody gets my jokes. Anyway, <laughs> he rode down into the main square where an inn called the Eagle's Cry stood, directing the sable boy to house and feed his horse. Cassio, Cassa, 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 whatever, Cassio walked into the inn and was surprised by its ambience. A minstrel he had heard play once in Gildengdale was performing a jaunty old tune to the clapping of the mountain men. Such forced merriment was not what Cassia wanted at that moment. A glum Dunmer woman was seated at the only table far from the noise, so he took his drink there and sat down without invitation. It was only when he did so that he noticed that she was holding a newborn baby. <gasps> it's gonna be what's her name? I forgot her name, Tulara. The mistress of the the duke. They gotta meet. Ah, oh, it's it's just like Game of Thrones, man. They're all the threads are all coming together. That's cool. I like that. Anyway, I've uh, just come from my wind. He said rather awkwardly, lowering his voice. I've been fighting for Vivac and the Duke of Mornhold against the Imperial Army. A traitor to my people, I guess you'd call me. I am also a traitor to my people," said the woman, holding up her hand, which was scarred with a branded symbol. It means that I can never go back to my homeland. Well, you're not thinking of staying here, are you? Laughed Cassio. It's certainly quaint, but come winter tide, there's going to be snow up to your eyelashes. It's no place for a new baby. What is her name? Muswell. It means beauty of the forest. Where are you going? Duane. On the bay on on, on the bay at Highmark. You're welcome to join me. I could use the company. He held out his hand. Cassia Whiteley. Tulara, said the woman after a pause. She was going to use her family's name first, as it is as is tradition, but she realized that it was no longer her name. I would love to accompany you. Thank you. 19th of last seed, 2920. Aldlambassi, Morrowind. 
Five men and two women stood in the silence of the great room of the castle. The only sound, the scrawl of quill on parchment, and the gentle tapping of rain on the large picture window. As the prince set the seal of Cyrodiil on the document, the piece was made official. The Duke of Mournhold broke out in a roar of delight, ordering wine brought in to commemorate the... That's right, yeah, commemorate the end of the 80 years of war. Only Sother C stood apart from the group. His face betrayed no emotion. Those who knew him best knew he did not believe in endings or beginnings, but in the continuous cycle for which this was but a small part. My prince, said the castle steward, unhappy at breaking the celebration, there's a messenger here from your mother, the empress. He asked to see... He asked to see your father, but he, but as he did not arrive. Oh, uh, Juliet excused himself and went to speak with the messenger. The Empress does not live in the Imperial City, asked Vivek. No, said Amalexia, shaking her head sadly. Her husband has imprisoned her in Black Marsh, feeling, fearing that she was plotting a revolution against him. She is extremely wealthy and has powerful allies in the Western Colovian estates, so he could not marry another or have her executed. They've been at an impasse in the, for the last 17 years since Juliac was a child. The prince returned a few minutes later. His face betrayed his anxiety though he took trouble to hide, troubles to hide it. My mother needs me, he said simply. I'm afraid I must leave at once. If I may have a copy of the treaty, I will bring it with me to show the Empress the good we have done today, and then I will carry it on to the Imperial City so it may be made official. Prince Juriac left with the fond of, fa the fond of farewells of the Three of Morwen. The Three in capital letters. Yeah, because they're gods. As they watched him ride out into the wind-swept night south towards Black Marsh, Vivek said, Tamriel will be much healed when he has the throne. Pardon me. Needed some water. Because the last day is a doozy. Oh, shit. <sighs> 31st of last seed, 2920, Dorzaza Pass, Black Marsh. The moon was rising over the desolate quarry, steaming with swamp gas from a particularly hot summer, as the prince and his two guard escort rode out of the forest. The massive piles of earth and dung had been piled high in antiquity by some primitive long dead tribe of Black Marsh, hoping to keep out some evil from the north. Evidently, the evil had broken through at Dorzer Pass. The large crack in the sand, lonely rampant... Wait, what? The large crack in the sand, lonely rampart that stretched for miles. Okay, yeah, sure, I get it. Not worded very well, but okay. The black twisted trees that grew on the barrier cast strange shadows down, like a net tangling. The prince's mind was on his mother's cryptic letter, hinting at the threat of an invasion. He could not, of course, tell the Dunmer about it, at the very least until he knew more and had notified his father. After all, the letter was meant for him. It was its urgent tone that made him decide to go directly to Gideon. The Empress had also warned him about a band of former slaves who attacked caravans going into Dulce Pass. She advised him to be certain to make his imperial shield visible, so they would know he was not one of the hated Dunmer slavers. Upon riding into the tall weeds that flooded through the pass like a noxious river, the prince ordered that his shield be displayed. I can see why the slaves use this, said the prince's captain. It's an excellent location for an ambush. Julek nodded his head, but his thoughts were elsewhere. What threat of invasion could the Empress have discovered? Were the Akavari on the seas again? If so, how could his mother, from her cell in Castle Giovese, know of it? A rustle in the weeds, and a single sharp human cry behind him interrupted his ponderings. Guess what? That letter wasn't from his mother. 
No, I don't think it was. Turning around, the prince discovered that he was alone. His escort had vanished. The prince peered over the stretch of the moonlit sea of grass, which waved in almost hypnotic patterns to the ebb and flow of the night wind, billowing through the pass. It was impossible to tell if a struggling soldier was beneath this system of vibrations, a dying horse beneath another. A high whistling wind drowned out any sound of sound of the victims of God damn it. Drowned out any sound the victims of the ambush might be making. Julik drew his sword and thought about what to do, his mind willing, his heart not to panic. He was closer to the exit of the pass than the entrance. Whatever had slain his ex his escort must have been behind him. If he rode fast enough, perhaps he could outrun it. Sparing his horse to gallop, he charged for the hills ahead, framed by the mighty black piles of dirt. When he was thrown, it happened so suddenly. He was hurtling forward before he was truly conscious of the fact he landed several yards beyond where his horse had fallen, breaking his shoulder and his back on impact. A numbness washed over him as he stared at the, his poor dying steed, its belly sliced open ugh, by one of the several spears jutting up from below the surface of the grass. Prince Jarek was not able to turn and face the figure that emerged from the grass, nor able to move to defend himself. His throat was cut, Without ceremony. This is so Game of Thrones! It is such Game of Thrones! It's the Red Wedding. Well, it's not the Red Wedding. But it is that whole cutting of the throat Red Wedding thing. Anyway. Miramur cursed when he saw the face of his victim. More clearly in the moonlight. He had seen the Emperor at the Battle of Bodrum. When he fought in his majesty's command, and was clearly not the emperor. Searching the body, he found the letter and a treaty signed by Vivek and Alexia of the Sea of the Duke of Mournhold, representing Morrowind and the Prince Jurek Cyrodiil, representing the Cyrodiilic Empire. Curse my luck, muttered Miramar to himself, and the whispering grass. I've only killed the prince. Where's the reward in that? Miramar destroyed the letter, as Zook had instructed him to do. And pocketed the treaty. <gasps> oh no! Zook hired Miramar to kill the Emperor. But the Emperor never went there. So the Prince went instead. And now that he's killed the Prince. Uh, what's her name? What's her name? Um, what's her name? The Empress. Um, yeah. T -t -t Tivia? She's going to be upset. Oh no. Oh, what a comedy of errors. <laughs> comedy of errors? Ah, oh, whatever. Anyway. Uh, Miriam destroyed the ladder, as Zook had instructed him to do, and pocketed the treaty. At the very least, such a curiosity would have been would have had some market value. He disassembled the traps and he, and he pondered his next step. Returned to Gideon and asked his employer for a lesser reward for killing the heir. Move on to other lands. That's probably the best option. Don't go back. At the very least, he considered he had picked up two useful skills for the Battle of Bodrum. From the Dunmo, he had learned the excellent spear trap. Oh, that's why he did that. And abandoning the Imperial Army, he had learned how to skulk in the grass. The year is considered co continued in Hearthfire. Oh, man. Things like... This is a good book series. I, um... Remember the... the, the like, the, one of the best... I forgot what the name of the video was. It was a Polygon video where he like went through all the books of Sky oh, Skyrim. It was actually Skyrim. Is this book even in Skyrim? Maybe it's not. Because he he, uh, he mentioned Fal F Fake Falcon as a good book. And uh, also uh, Dance and Fire. But he never... I don't think he mentioned this one. I think he like completely disregarded all the um, historical books because they're boring. This is a good fucking story. Anyway, this was Last Seed, book 8 of 2920, the last year of the first era by Calivac Townway. When we come back, we will read uh, Hearthfire. But for now, my name is Leo, and I will see you next time.